Well, 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 if it's Friday, dude, it's we time for Saiyan Kwan. It's the Saiyan Kwan. Yeah, that's for sure. That's for sure. I'm, uh, I'm, I look forward to the weekends. This weekend doesn't look uh, all that spiffy, unfortunately. There's still a few graduations that are going to happen, but uh, I, I hope it clears and I hope the weather forecast is wrong. But Saturday looks like it's going to be kind of crappy. Hmm. And then, um, uh, my godson's taking me out uh, for Father's Day. Well, I, I'm really lucky, you know. Uh, I've I've got uh, four godsons, and I'll tell you, uh, it's it's a nice feeling knowing people care about you. You know, I don't know what that's like. I'm sorry. Well, happy <laughs> Father's Day, Mikey and Joe. Happy Father's Day. And to, you, and to you also, my son. Yeah. Yeah, you got two great kids. Got two and a bonus daughter too. So yeah, that's uh, awesome. Yep, kids I, are the best. Yep. Yeah, yeah, uh, really. But anyway, uh, welcome to the Sicilian Corner, everybody. Yeah. My name is Mikey, and uh, Lou Blassie is behind the controls, and I can't ask for anything better than that. Uh, Lou knows his stuff. He got me kicked off of Facebook. I mean, you know, things I like that. <laughs> yes, you that did. Me. Yes, you did. No, we got a copyright infringement. Oh, no, yeah. no, no. It's not, what is it? That's not what's going on. Tell, tell me about it. The music we played. No, nothing to do with music. Someone opened an account in your, in your name. There's a duplicate Mike Lamazo account. Oh, there's there's another one. Yeah. Oh, wow. Someone oh. opened it with. Is the world ready for another one? That's terrifying. Yep. Is that what happened? <laughs> yes. So they, they said, you know. So they're looking it, to verify your identity. That's all. Hmm. Something's fishy. That doesn't. Yeah. Well, they wrote to me saying it was a copyright problem. Oh, well, occasionally we get those with the music, but that's fine. All they do is they block out the audio in Belarus is basically what happens. <laughs> right. <laughs> There's two sure. markets. It's Belarus. And, and that person Turkey. in Belarus is very upset. I know. Yeah, he's upset. Well, anyway, so. They, they want give the royalty money for they Belarus. said respond back to this link. Well, you didn't click the link, do you? you never click links. Well, the click I did try to, but I'm not on Facebook. So how can I get to a link on Facebook to fill out and to answer their questions? Hmm. I can't. It just says no, I'll, I'll send you the I'll send you the little checklist that you go through to, to pull this off. Yeah. If you can. I'm kind know. of enjoying it. I had you know, I have a Facebook is awful. I, I'm finding that out the hard way. Um, Joe, I'll tell you, since I haven't been on Facebook, and I had like 3,300 people that supposedly friends. I probably know maybe five of them. Right. But, you know, I posted a lot more than the average person, except for you. Yeah, I'm insanely yeah. crazy on Facebook. Well, you had, yeah. Uh, well, anyway... Uh, it's been very upsetting to oh, me. I saw these cinnamon rolls we have today on Facebook this morning. Was it That's Facebook right. This morning? Yes, yeah. and well, and Instagram. Mostly, yeah. I'm on Instagram. That's kind okay. of my where I really live. Facebook, you know, it's it's an older yep. kind of. Crowd. What is Instagram? What are you saying? What is Instagram? Don't laugh. Don't laugh. Instagram this... is a social media platform that, um, like. It's no, really great for chefs. Break my chops. Go ahead. Right. You know, it's great for chefs and photographers. It's really based on. How about a pee on like for, for you? Well, I don't know. Maybe your second doppelganger can start its own, you know, Instagram. <laughs> You'd be very popular on there. Really? Yeah. You could put up your nudes and everything. It would be great. Wow. Hey, everybody. Welcome. My guest who's in the studio. I appreciate you going out of your way to come down here. What did it take you? 20 minutes? About 28. How come you charge me 50 bucks? Hey, man. It's drive time. What kind of Uber is that? <laughs> <laughs> Joe God, how are everybody? Thank you so much for having me today. Chef I'm coming down. Personified. Right. I well, how are those cinnamon rolls? Ooh. Right? Ooh. I, Louis inhaled it. He, he, he actually lit the dish. That's okay. There's I nothing. understand that. That happens a lot when I cook. Yeah, but I'm not going to do that. You want the dish pack, so I'm not going to lick it. <laughs> <laughs> you know what he said to me last week? 
Joe coming in the studio? He says, yes, he is. I wonder what he's bringing. Oh. See, we expect a lot from you. Yeah, you do. You but know? you should. Expectations should be high, and I'll leap over that bar every time. But well, we go back. All of us go back a long ways. Yeah, we've been, geez. Yeah. I mean, it's got to be at least 10 years at yeah. this point. Something like that. It, right? It you may, were in Maybe when, a little bit more. I met you when you were in your 80s. So... <laughs> <laughs> wow! Nice. I mean, the softball was there. I had to yeah. <laughs> listen. How, how many hats do you wear? I mean, uh, let's talk about it. It's I mean, crazy what I do. You're an executive chef. I'm a chef. Yeah, I'm a private chef. I cook for um, Celtics players, Red Sox players. I have a TV show on Pluto. I What's the name of the show? From scratch, Joe Gatto's from scratch. And then I have a show on WBUR, Boston, NPR, um, called Joe Gatto's From Scratch. I have a national book called From Scratch, because shockingly, I make everything from scratch. How's the book? <laughs> <laughs> Wait a second. Don't laugh at that, because you were telling Jeff during, during the break, during the crossover of the show, that you just take Atlantic Ocean water for the salt. I did, yeah. That's, that's I, from scratch. Yeah, and um, I mean, I hand forged my own knives. I've made my own charcoal. How's on everybody? Broken down whole animals. I milk cows and make butter and cheese. I distilled rum. I really go all the way. That's kind of the fun for it, fun part for me because you know, food to me. Yeah. And I mean, you guys know it's it's more than I. Yeah. I do. I love making great meals. Do I love what I do? Do I love all the shows and everything? Yeah. But at its core. Food reaches people in a different way because food can leap over language barriers. It can leap over religion, politics. When someone hands you a dish that they've made, they're handing a piece of themselves over. And that's what I really love to explore. And, you know, the heritage that comes behind it and the family history. There's Tradition. just so much more than just what you're shoving in your pie hole, which is a great part of it. And I love it. And I make great food, and I and I really love to do that part. You consider yourself to be pretty good, do you? I do. Yeah, I do at many things. Cooking yeah. at that <laughs> level is the closest thing to sorcery that we have. That's true. And it is basically alchemy. It's, it is alchemy. It's, it's unbelievable. You just get all the stuff like the Atlantic Ocean water, and it turns into a meal. It's just, it's amazing. I always say that food is the perfect combination of art and science. Hmm. That, yeah, that's a good definition. Yeah. That's a good definition. Hey, folks, our telephone number here, 978-659-0072. Once again, 978-659-0072. Call in, let's chat. Yeah, you, you're open to all kinds of suggestions. Oh, yeah, all you know? the time. Yeah. I mean, yeah. what could go wrong? All right. <laughs> you, you mentioned making charcoal. Right. And I find that a little strange. What made, what, in your mind, what made you don't, you don't want to go in here? It's scary in here. Is it real? It's terrifying. Behind door number three. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> you never know what's going to pop out. Why, what, what triggered the inspiration? Like, what was, what was the driving force for you to say, you know something? Instead of going on aisle five and picking up a bag of charcoal, I think I'll spend three quarters of a day making it. Yeah, I have this weird... See, that's my conversation. I doubt he had that conversation. Yeah, that doesn't exist in my mind. My yeah. mind says it has... I have this innate curiosity to find out how and why. And when I see something, like when I'm chopping with my knife and it's just balanced right and it's just... It feels great in my hand. I want to know how that happened why why is this knife so much better than the other and that's the same with food as i continued to back it up yeah i started discovering so much more about what food is and what it means and the traceability and the path and the people behind it and you start to understand that food is this huge book of stories and as i started reading them i just got absolutely fascinated and then at one point i just painted myself into a corner <laughs> Because then it was just like, well, that's what I do. And everyone knows me for it, I guess. Um, but you know something? There's hundreds, hundreds of food shows on the networks, on TV. You created something that's interesting. Your personality shines and you're funny. I really appreciate that. No, and I'm serious. 
I mean, if I somebody said to describe you, that's the way I would describe you. Would I you think, throw sexy in there, maybe? Like, <laughs> like sex appeal, maybe? Well, you're a good looking. Dude. All right, all right. All right. You're a good looking. Dude. Hello, Friday. <laughs> <laughs> you're coming back next week. Oh, yeah. it. <laughs> Bring more seminars. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. But I, I, I like that because it separates you from the majority. Thank you know, you. a recipe is a recipe is a recipe. You, you know, you, you put. A teaspoon of this, a lemon zest, or whatever. Mm -hmm. That that's fine and dandy. Absolutely. Now, I, I wanna. I've never asked you this question before. Uh, your grandparents were they born in this country or? Yeah. Um. My I think my great grand my grandfather on my dad's side was from Italy. I didn't know my grandparents that well. They died. Oh, you didn't. Mm -mm. Okay. No, no, they died. What part of Italy were they from? Do you know? I want to stay Southern, but I could just be making. So you're up. really interested in your heritage, are you? No, I'm so into it. I mean, the only Italian I know is squares. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> That's all you need. It's, I mean, basically, yes. it's gotten me through living in. But you have good hand motions, so very I mean, that, that explains and very good. Yeah, that translates into volumes, doesn't it? Yeah, absolutely. You know, uh, the reason I ask is, you know, you take uh, once a month. We're going to do a segment. Uh, as a matter of fact, it's going to be a show uh, on Sicily. Oh, wow. And the traditions, what's going on, the foods, what to see now this time of year, what not to see. Uh, Estabata is going to be on with us. And uh, she's an amazing, amazing, amazing woman. And she's going to be on the first Friday of each month. And um, I'm excited to have her join forces with the Sicilian Connor again. Yeah, that's uh, awesome. Yeah, and it's going to be uh, a monthly thing. And, uh, you know, she does tours of Sicily, and they're small, crafted, you know, basically maybe 10 people, 8 people. Oh, yeah. Uh, so you can travel around a lot easier. And they take you into places, her and Al Zappa. Al is Tommy's brother. I don't yeah. know if you had the chance of you remember him? Yeah, yeah. I yeah. think we all connected at one point. Yeah. And uh, it, it's it's a good segment. A lot of people, uh, you know, they love the traditions where they were born, their grandparents were born. But I was picked on Sicily because Sicily got conquered by so many different countries. Right. And each one brought something in, whether it be spices or whatever the case yeah. might be. A thousand percent. I mean, that's the amalgamation of different dishes is what really is it? always what? the amalgamation. Me. Um, wow. You, you've been reading it? <laughs> no, I pick three words on the way up and I just use I love them it. over and, and over. We're going to hear them up there. <laughs> so when I get home, I'm going to be like, kids, stop amalgamating. Okay, no, <laughs> that's not going to work. <laughs> but I mean, I always find it interesting because where the dish comes from, you really start to find so much more about how it came to be. Exactly. I have this thing with, where authentic, it, it's... It, I feel it's kind of crazy to call things authentic yeah. almost because <clears throat> everything comes from somewhere. We have a place in Tulum. We're actually going in two weeks in Mexico and we're down there a lot. And I love you, going down there. You like going down in July, do you? Oh, it's absolutely ridiculously gorgeous and perfect. <laughs> it's, it's unbelievable. I think, you, I think you're hogging me, dude. No, no, no. How we, hot is we it? We have a place there. We have a house. How hot it's, is it? It's not that hot. It's not like, I mean, you're going 80s, to Mexico. Yeah, Tulum. It's not that hot. It will be 85 to 90, and we'll be on the beach. Yeah, it's on the Gulf, right? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Right on the water. It's unbelievable. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. I'm not. I'm, I'm not. No, I mean, no. I swear to God, I'm not like pull this one. Are there a lot of uh, ruins there? There are the Mayan ruins yeah. right there. Yeah. I had an opportunity. I I spent the day traveling, and viewing a few of them, and got a kind of a history lesson yeah it's the the amount of history there and that's what i mean by like the food right like a taco i mean that didn't that the way that developed when you know they had to use corn to make tortillas because it came over as wheat but wheat's not there yeah right and then you say oh then we go over to texas well texas isn't authentic well it's not authentic for mexico but it's authentic for texas because yeah. they were using crunchy right and what are they going to use they're going to use beef not pork mm -hmm. because that right yep 
so I have this thing where tracking dishes down and kind of learning, you know, the history of them interests me because why does North Carolina say my barbecue is authentic, but then Texas says the same thing? The two can't be true, right? Or well, can they? Uh, they can. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Because authentic is kind of a weird term. Memphis right? barbecue, it's, Carolina barbecue. Yeah. Barbecue. Right. But then if you cook, oh, if you're awesome. in Memphis and you cook it different, and they say, well, you're cooking in Memphis, isn't it authentic? No. But what's, what's authentic? Yeah. I, it's just such a loose term. So, you know, there's so much to food beyond just eating a dish. Absolutely. Absolutely. I agree with you 100%. What's your white whale, Joe? What's the dish that you're trying to nail that you can't kill it? Jeez, I haven't had one of those for a while. You know what took me a while to get to the point where I was like, okay, that's it. Tamales took me not not a long time, but it was a couple tries, and I had to you make the masa, right, from field dent corn. Right. So you have to put it through a, pot, a process called nix tamalization. And... That's get Mikey again. Number two. <laughs> yeah, we got one more coming. Next demolition is just yeah. when you're using like I think a slack I did, like bring it down the moss. I think so I did that yesterday. Can, oh, you did? I think so. I, if you, he just explained the term to me, and I understood it less after he explained it. <laughs> that's going to happen. That's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but it's it did take a while, and then you know I made culture need to p build the stuff in it, which is like pulled pork on steroids kind of oh, thing. It's nice. it's a it's rat it's pork that usually they do a whole pig but in this case it's, you know i used a shoulder rubbed with achiote and some lemon slimes sour oranges and wrapped in banana leaves and then slow roast it and then you pull it so basically for our listeners you think uh pork boston pork yeah 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 shoulder yeah, yeah absolutely cook it very 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 slowly you know, and i make my so salt- that, i'm sorry that was an interesting trip because you must have dealt delved into the culture to get that nailed in on it because, a thousand percent yeah so it, a thousand you're percent. Chasing the cuisine you have to get into the culture because that's what spawns the cuisine. it's a much bigger chase than just yeah. getting the right ingredients from you know whole foods because it's not about that for me yeah. it goes a lot deeper and it goes a lot further so you know when i'm chasing something like that i really want to know where it came from and why and how it was developed and that helps me make the dish in to my mind authentic the way and there we go see there's that trigger word authentic mm-hmm. right but it was really about making it in a way that i wanted to make it so i have to understand it from the core i get to that. build it the I way i that. want to customize it yeah, a lot of times if we go to a restaurant and um and i like trying different types of food mm-hmm. uh some people kind of same old same old uh i mean i have a friend all she wants to do, and no matter where you go, it's got to be a restaurant that's going to serve some kind of palm, bill palm, or chicken palm. Oh, that, my dad used to do that. And it drives me freaking crazy because there's so many different types of food out there. No matter what, every nationality offers you something. And I like, I like to experiment. I like to try. I'll try almost everything. That's yeah. good. You should because you're getting a taste of a culture. I mean, my wife and I go out on our date nights. And let can, me take a guess of what night it is. Now, you and I have not discussed this at all. Uh, hold, 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 hold off for one minute. It starts with a W. It does not. What? I want to know where this is going. No, I do too. I thought I, I thought it was Wednesday. Oh. No, we, we do Saturdays. Oh, you go out with the nuts. Yeah. Well, why would you go to a restaurant on a Saturday night? I mean. It's not like there's a now prison break downtown in Boston. <laughs> Pretty close. <laughs> no, I mean, you have to wait. Out. The food isn't the same. Oh, I, come I on. couldn't disagree more. Oh, come on. No, I mean, last week we went and we had Japanese because there's a place, uh, Fukaku, in Brookline that I'm a part of. Like, we did a little Instagram thing together. And How come you don't do an Instagram with us? I can't do an Instagram with you. Why? What, what do you want to do? You're not a restaurant, Mikey. I mean, I have to. We have to be a restaurant. No, no, no. You we can't can. give us a segment. I'll give you a segment. You have me back, and we'll do a segment. I'll I'll do an Instagram live the whole time. No, absolutely. Now we're talking. Now we're talking. My crowd would love you. Yeah, they you know. would. 
They would. <laughs> they would. <laughs> and he's We'd... got numbers, so that'd be good. Oh, yeah. I do. Yeah. So, yeah, so Japanese food. And the week before that, we did, um, like, authentic Thai street food. Wow. And had beef tongue and things like that. It's funny because uh, ra- there's a restaurant near where I am, a, a Thai restaurant, and I like Thai food. So I go to a bunch of the restaurants. And you can tell that this is a little bit different. And I don't want to use the word authentic because it will trigger you. But there's, there's something more sophisticated about this. It's like you taste it and it's like, oh, they know what they're doing. Yeah, that's yeah. what this place was. They reached out to me and they go back to the root. And, the they, exactly. and it was really it's authentic just, street food. That's yeah. what they were going for is mm-hmm. this. Because, you know, everything that's in America is going to be a little Americanized. There's nothing wrong with that. Yep, but yep. it's just the way it is. But these, this particular place in Brookline just didn't do it. And then there's this place in um, in Brookline called Night Moves. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of this, which is really cool. So my wife and I are super nerdy. And we love playing games. Like all different types of games. Cribbage, you name it. Like yep. we just love playing games. <laughs> so this place in Brookline has about 2,000 games. They're a coffee shop. And you just, you can basically rent a table. You go in and you pay like five bucks a piece and you get a table and you can pick from all the games and you sit there oh, and have different. your coffee oh, and play different. all different games. Yeah, and and you guys tons played of chess, right? Yeah, we did. Mm. How do you, oh, because I put that. See? that. Yeah, so yeah, we yeah. played chess, which I, I, I won't tell you who won. I yeah. did. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> hey, Joe, Roger Trudell says, good morning, guys. Uh, you can tell it's Friday. This must be the Sicilian Connor. Yeah, see. You know what we're going to do now? What are we going to do now? Is it trivia? I want you to listen to some of our fantastic sponsors. I would love to do that. We're going to take a commercial break. Louis, why don't you take us out, please? Ciao, this is Esther of You, Me, and Sicily. I want to talk to you about Tommy Amin and the great staff at Butcher Boy Market. Families, foodies, and home chefs come together at Butcher Boy to talk good food and create traditions. They offer the best in quality cuts of beef, pork, lamb, poultry, and restaurant-style steaks and chops. Produce? All of their produce is hand-selected to complement any meal or even to make it your main course. Their deli serves fresh roast beef, turkey, and beautiful imported Italian cold cuts and antipasto. And don't forget the Butcher Boy Bakery, featuring sweet delectables from all over the state, as well as their very own bakery. That's Butcher Boy, where the secret to a great steak is, of course, the steak. Located at 1077 Oscott Street in North Andover, Massachusetts, in the Butcher Boy Plaza. Ciao! This is David from the Sicilian Corner. You know Mike, Tom, and I love to go to Salisbury Beach, but we love different things and can never agree where to go. Tom likes the casual family-style dining with the great Italian cuisine, Capri Seaside Italian Kitchen and Pizzeria. Me? I love the elegant romantic vibe sea glass with the amazing view and terrific menu with prices that make it the place you want to visit each and every week. Mike loves a drink in his hand and a cool ocean breeze right off the surf and the rhythms of a cooler reggae band. We all know Mike loves Bob Marley tunes at Surfside. Who doesn't love a great show? National acts, comedy, regional favorites, and the beautiful and intimate Blue Ocean Concert Hall. Lucky for us, Atlantic Hospitality is the host of all of these great places, and they treat everyone like they are Mike Lamazzo. Best of all, we never have to choose. Park the car once, and all this fun is right at your fingertips. You can have it all in the heart of Salisbury Beach. Find out all the ways you can have a great night at Salisbury Beach at NorthShorePavilion.com. And Mike, Tom, and I will see you there. This is Tom Zappala. Located in the heart of downtown Haverhill, the Haverhill Beef Company is a full-service, old-fashioned butcher shop and meat market that continues to be a valued family tradition since 1952. Peter and Monica Carboni's Haverhill Beef 
offers individualized service from an outstanding selection of marinated sirloin tips, homemade sausage, marinated chicken, and thick, juicy Chairman Reserve steaks. Your family deserves the best, so call Peter at 978-374-4795 or visit their website at www.haverbeef.com. Hi, this is Mike, and I would like to tell you about the Deborah K. Law Offices, a firm that is focused on estate planning, probate, trust administration, and elder law issues. You will feel comfortable discussing important issues concerning both you and your loved ones, as well as having the information you need to make an informed decision about your family's future. How do I know? Because I'm a client of Dan Deborah Care. If you want to have peace of mind knowing that your loved ones are protected, call Deborah Care Law Offices today in Massachusetts, 978-686-4645 in New Hampshire, 603-894-4141. At Catadella Funeral Home, we reinvest in our business to provide your family with the best facilities. It begins with a beautifully landscaped exterior, parking for 250 vehicles, and a comfortable and inviting access to our renovated interior. Funerals can be costly, so you should review and compare plans to make sure you receive services that are fairly priced. I invite you to experience the Catadella difference in cost, facility, and service. Catadella is honoring and celebrating the lives of the people we loved, providing exceptional care since 1929. Today. 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 Today, Lawrence General Hospital has affiliations with leading Boston academic medical centers, top specialists from Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center and Floating Hospital for Children at Tufts Medical Center, work with our local doctors to bring world-class care close to home. Today, amazing partnerships are happening at Lawrence General Hospital. To learn more, visit lawrencegeneral.org slash today. Italian artisan cuisine combines simple fresh ingredients with time-honored preparation to create an incredible culinary experience. At Tuscan Kitchen, located in Salem's historic depot district, talented chefs prepare everything in-house from scratch for all to see. Guests enjoy their meal literally in our kitchen as food is prepared right in front of you. Wood ovens burn from morning till night, roasting vegetables, baking bread, and firing delightful thin crust pizzas. Prime steaks are seared on a wood grill. A rotisserie slowly roasts marinated whole chickens and lamb while a pasta maker creates fresh more than just artisan cuisine, Tuscan Kitchen features the wine bar, live entertainment, weekly wine tastings, and elegant private dining and event space. Call 603-952-4875 or visit TuscanKitchen.com to make a reservation and learn more about the culinary adventure that awaits. In Italy, cooking is an art form. Tuscan Kitchen. Experience artisan Italian. Orthopedics Northeast and Essex Orthopedics have joined forces as Mobility Bone and Joint Institute to bring improved access and outstanding medical care. While our name has changed, our dedication to exceptional care remains the same as it has for the past 30 years. Same location, 16 Pelham Road, Salem, New Hampshire. This is Cindy. And Mike Kunsla. Owners and operators of Four Oaks Country Club and Grazi Italian Restaurant in Drakeit, Massachusetts. Grazi Italian Restaurant is the hidden gem of the Merrimack Valley. Why is that? We have an incredible chef. Oscar Figueroa. In the words of local famous chef and restaurant owner Lydia Shire, Oscar thrives on hard work. He is capable and gifted. No one makes better food. Scallops, see it to perfection. Housemade ravioli with farm fresh local corn. And buttery tender lazy man's lobster, just to name a few. You have to come experience Grazi Italian Restaurant for yourself. Grazi Italian Restaurant, located at Four Oaks Country Club, 80 Meadow Creek Drive in Drake, Massachusetts. Hope, Hope to, to see you, you soon. soon. Well, we're back. Uh, Louia, I believe we have a follow up. Yeah, Roger. Oh, Roger. Roger. Hello. Hello. Hello, Michael. My son, how are you? Uh, I'm doing well, brother. That's what I like yeah, to hear. I, I would love to spend about 24 hours. Except, yeah, well, it's like, oh, my God. This guy's <laughs> a renaissance man. <laughs> oh, <laughs> please. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Come on now. Did he, I, I, no, no, I, I, I Did he write that for you? you? What I mean. Roger, I'll see you that 20 bucks later. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, again, my son is a chef, CIA trained, and I've learned so much just watching him 
Um, That's and, amazing. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm hearing you, and it's just, um, I, again, it's just eye-opening. It's, um, and I, I don't know how you do it, because I, I, I'm, I'm in the trades, a carpenter, and I, uh, if I was doing what you were doing, I was doing stairs, I would cut down the tree, I would kill <laughs> right. the bumper, yeah. I would turn the spindles, the, the whole nine yards. How did you come up with that? Because I, you are good question. one of a kind. I Thank you so it's, much. It's amazing to me. I, I just really, you know, like I was saying, I just really love the process. I really love understanding it. And the further I can take it, the more fun it is for me because it's really about the discovery of it. I mean, I don't go down and pull out the water from the Atlantic, you know, when I'm making a sandwich at home. But, you know, I I, uh, I just I love the discovery process. It really just kind of feeds my soul in so many different ways. So it, it just kept going further and further. And one of the cool things about it is, as I went further with it, the better the food was. It just became this part where it was just absolutely phenomenal. I did a BLT where, you know, I broke down a pig and I took out the belly and I made the bacon from scratch. Then I made sriracha from scratch. I made mayo. I did the mayo, sriracha mayo. I made bread from scratch and I grind the flour. And the, the sandwich was just ridiculous. I mean, and I even went to the farm and picked the lettuce and tomatoes. But the the sandwich was unbelievable and it still lives in my memory so having something like that i can imagine that lives with me it was worth it yeah roger is uh he grows on his backyard it's it's amazing yeah. to see what he has and you know he's my supply one of my suppliers for fresh tomatoes right? oh uh, i didn't know you had a supplier oh sure uh, i got two. Oh, geez oh, sidekick peter hook a brother up <laughs> by, by the way by the way, Father Mikey, how are those tomato plants doing? You know something? I am, I, I, I am almost, in, I'm impressing myself. <laughs> I, I'll be honest. If I do say so myself. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I pinched the suckers off of them. The things are like five times the size when you gave them to me. Nice. Uh, they're doing, yeah, they're happy. I sing to them. You know how yeah, you like go and you, you learn about the tradition of yeah. where the, me? I try to make my stuff happy. What do you sing so, to them? Is it Lady Gaga? Juan, that you Juan sing to them? Donia, oh. did you get any on you? Okay. Yeah, it's a that great, seems, it's a that's great they song. Like. I was thinking and some Dean uh, Martin songs or something. Would they drink in your hand out there? Well, uh, that, that, that happens. I see that like right at sunset. Yep. Yeah. I, I see it. Yep. You know, we'll yeah. I, uh, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm an early riser, so I go out there with my cup of coffee and I roam the property. And it's the, to me, it's the best time of the day. Are you an early riser? I have three kids, so that, I mean, there's no choice. <laughs> and I want to thank uh, uh, Chef Gallagher. And I, I bless you with Chef because you earned that right. Um, thank you. I used to call my son Brian. Now it's Chef um, because it is a, it's like a doctor or whatever you do, a doctor of food, whatever you want to call it. Oh, I like but that. It, it, it is a right, and it is a, um, especially after the pandemic, during the pandemic. That was horrendous. Yeah, he's changed Tough. jobs three times. And Restaurants, restaurant business. <laughs> it's a tough. If you want to make a billion dollars? You better start with two. There you go, right. Roger. I want to thank you very much for giving us a call this morning. It's okay, all. Yeah, it's all. It's, it's always thank a pleasure. It's always a pleasure. Thanks, Roger. Take care. Uh, I wanted to ask you. We, we were talking off here about knives. Yes. Uh, can you explain the process of making? Uh, sure. If you don't mind. Or I is mean, it too making, detailed? It's, no, I can give it an overview. Making knives is one of the fun. And, you know, if people want to see the process at Chef Joe Gatto on Instagram, there's a video up where I just made knives with Adam Sitchma in, in Cambridge. And it was um, another just super. I've done it a Where do you get times. the steel? He gets it, and it and they import it from different places. So okay. when the first time when we did it for the show, we were punching the knife out of carbon steel. You know, you start with a I big know. sheet of I carbon know. steel. We punch it out, and then it goes through the process of heating it. You can see, you know, I had to put on the fire suit and dip it in the hot liquid. Ooh, it wow. was so intense. fun. So yeah, it's intense. so it's so intense, but it's super fun. And then after that, you know, you're you're hammering it down, and then you're shaving it, and then you're sharpening it, and then so you're what handling do you, it. What do you make? Like a 14-inch knife? For no, I don't. I like 
I like an eight inch chef knife. That's better uh, for me. Like a boning knife. What do you use? No, as no, like an knife? eight inch chef knife. But an what's eight inch chef knife? What's the key? Because as you mentioned, I'm a knife snob. That there are certain knives they just feel good. They have that great balance. Yeah, that's like important. That. Yeah, how do you get? How do you get there? What's that well? Going? I mean, the way that like I have two knives that I use all the time. One of them was for the one I hand forged on the show, and the other one was made by Adam Sixman in Cambridge. He's been in the Globe and everything. He's a master knife knife maker. He's a great friend of mine. And that one, you know, he was taking my hand and molding. It. You know, it was wow. it was for my hand. It, I call it the Ferrari. <laughs> so it's you know, it literally has red handles and like racing stripes on it. Nice. So that was built for me. When I when I tell people, you know, when you're buying a knife, you know, just for advice for people out there listening, don't buy a set of knives. I, I think it's the biggest waste of time. Me too. Yeah. Find a knife like an eight inch chef knife or six inch if, if it, a smaller one fits you. You know, find one knife that you'll use all the time. You might need a boning knife and you might need a bread knife, possibly, but find a chef's knife that will do everything. Because for my chef's knife, I'm doing fine vegetable work to you know breaking breaking things down off of the, off of the bone. Mm -hmm. So it's really about what feels comfortable in your hand. Try out your knife. Don't just buy a knife and take it home. Yeah. You know, feel the balance. Feel how it is. Everything's going to fit different in your hand, and you right. really—that's going to yeah. be with you for the rest of your life, just like we were talking about. Yeah. Can I, they be sharpened, I, or are they done once they're done? Oh I, no, I'm no. You can sharpen them. Back. Yeah. You can you can sharpen them, and there's like little fun sharpeners that you can get on Amazon that will keep the blade really sharp. Mike and I were talking before, and you know, you can use the steel, but the steel doesn't sharpen your knife really. What it's doing is it's it's knocking off these little micro fractures on the blade to keep it a smoother cut. Mm -hmm. So like, you don't, we call it cracking carrots, right. you know, and, but you do need, you know, you use a stone, right? Uh, I use a steel. A steel will take off the, the little burrs, yeah. but you really want to be sharpening that with either a stone or like a little device you can I, get off Amazon. I, I, I use the steel for everything as far yeah. as sharpening. And you know, I told you, I bought those two knives back in 1967. That's amazing. Those are the kind and, of knives you want. Uh, you know, I had a little carrying case for them, and I was a meat manager for Market Basket slash the Moolahs. And wherever I went, and I went, I opened a lot of the stores for yeah. them. I would have my little traveling case, and off I'd go. I just awesome. want to mention to our listeners, our telephone number is 978 659 zero zero seven two you have a question uh for joe or you want to learn how to make charcoal which i'm dying to hear <laughs> <laughs> it was sarcasm let's hear Quick in here let's let's hear about it what's involved how much charcoal time? charcoal's charcoal's really easy yeah i mean charcoal is basically you're taking wood, wood or whatever any kind of wood, whatever yeah you you know you want you don't want any pressure treated wood or anything like that no 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 but I mean, you can carbonize anything. You could put lobster tails in there. So you just and or carbonize. No, what it, what happens is, so let's say we're doing wood, right, yeah. and some lobster tails. You put that in a twenty-five gallon drum, okay, okay like a twenty-five clean twenty-five gallon oil drum, and you seal that. Okay, you seal the wood in there because what burns in wood isn't wood; it's wood gas. Okay, that's what ignites. What are the ashes from? We'll get to that. <laughs> so once you get that sealed in there and it won't ignite, you put that drum in a 55 gallon drum and surround it with wood. And then you ignite that wood. And what that does is it basically cooks the wood inside and turns it to carbon. But it won't ignite. So you don't get, you know, burnt wood. You get carbon. Huh. Wow. Pretty cool, right? Have you ever heard of Kingsford? I don't know what that is. No, it's. Is that some type of dance? Uh, Kingsford? <laughs> <laughs> we used to do the King Kingsford when we were kids. Did you really? Yeah, the yeah. hop. <laughs> I have a cousin in Texas who used to throw these Super Bowl parties. And one time he brought this guy out to do uh, pulled pork. Mm -hmm. Just cook it right there. And he brought the mesquite wood. And it was the greatest thing I ever saw. I just sat there and watched him make, you know, I don't know if he's making coals out of it or just burning it down. To yeah. Use, but he just, he went out and got the mesquite wood. And brought it to the party in the morning of that's awesome yeah. yeah the wood will make a difference because you're going to infuse a little flavor if you're yeah. using pecan if you're using apple if you're using cherry all of those are going to infuse a different flavor as you go forward and you know you want to be using charcoal 
I try to avoid anything like, you know, Kingsford or anything that's pressed. Yeah, something that's convenient. Joanne, yeah, I, a convenience. Joanne and I don't wants get along. to join the show. Go ahead, Joanne. Hey, Joanne, how are you? Good, how are you? Welcome to the Sicilian um, Corner. Well, thank you. It's been very interesting. I'm enjoying listening to them. Well, thank you. Um, how I about me? Am I interesting too? Oh, you've always been. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I'm Sicilian, and um, my mother uh, was obviously was Sicilian, and she was a self-taught, from scratch type of cook. You know, she didn't have a mother, so she taught herself. And she always said to me, do not boil a lobster. You lose the flavor. Stab it. Kill it. <laughs> Is that true? I, I'm, I'm sorry. Don't. Don't boil a lobster alive. Is that what you're saying? Yes, yes. Because if you were doing that to, to stuff it or to, that you lost the flavor. I would have to say that's that's a no. I, I would okay. I would think yeah. I mean I can't see how. I've always cooked them alive, so I don't I don't see how live if that would make a difference in flavor. All right. Cause she had this deer knife that she would like cut them down the middle clean them all yeah i mean you can definitely do that you can do it either way for sure a thousand percent but boiling whole lobsters i i mean i've done that but like you can definitely kill it and clean it and then stuff yeah. it you know so maybe that's what she was doing a certain dish with it that she had to do it that way that makes sense yeah well yeah. she would do it she that time you use the tamale and, and you know she would put that in the stuffing with some mushrooms and cheese and and uh, they were delicious very but classic when I went, yeah when i went to do it i just have, I just couldn't kill them like that. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, no. no, you put them in boiling water and you listen to them cry for about no, two minutes. No. That's actually not them crying. That's just that's just steam escaping. <laughs> <laughs> I had to explain that to my kids. <laughs> hey, hey, Joanne, I want to thank you very much for giving us a call this morning. I ho I hope okay. you do it. I hope you do it more often. Thank you, and, and I'm enjoying. Thank you, Joe, for all your. Uh, Yep. Uh, Thank you so on. much. It's great listening. Please, don't tell them that. Will you please? <laughs> While well, it's settling controversy, and I want to bury this one once and for all, your water for your pasta. Yeah. Salt. It not, should be like seawater. Not oil. And a ton of salt. It should be like seawater because, I mean, we make I think, pasta all the time. And yeah. that's something we make at home. My kids make it. Mm -hmm. Do they? So, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No problem. How old are your children? They are 5, 10, and 13. Never done it. Oh, I'd love to do and it. it's it's such an easy process, and it's super fun. Yeah. So if you want to salt your water heavily, because you're not adding salt when you're building out your pasta, so every strand is getting that nice coating of salt on it. That's the whole idea. So you want to heavily salt it, and oil in the in the water does not work. Wow. Yeah. Uh, Louis lives on Plum Island, so he's right. The water's right there, so he yeah. can get the water. And we'll talk about making salt too. Yeah, Listen, we make salt. In the meantime. I gotta take a break. Okay? okay, we can do that. We should be together for about four hours. We I, can, I we can, no problem. We can with that. four hours easy. No problem. We'll, we'll be right back, everyone. Ciao. Ciao, this is Esther of You, Me, and Sicily. I want to talk to you about Tommy Amin and the great staff at Butcher Boy Market. Families, foodies, and home chefs come together at Butcher Boy to talk good food and create traditions. They offer the best in quality cuts of beef, pork, lamb, poultry, and restaurant-style steaks and chops. Produce? All of their produce is hand-selected to complement any meal or even to make it your main course. Their deli serves fresh roast beef, turkey, and beautiful imported Italian cold cuts, cheeses, and antipasto. And don't forget the Butcher Boy Bakery, featuring sweet delectables from all over the state, as well as their very own bakery. That's Butcher Boy, where the secret to a great steak is, of course, the steak. Located at 1077 Oscott Street in North Andover, Massachusetts, in the Butcher Boy Plaza. Ciao! This is David from the Sicilian Corner. You know Mike, Tom, and I love to go to Salisbury Beach, but we love different things and can never agree where to go. Tom likes the casual family-style dining with great Italian cuisine, Capri Seaside Italian Kitchen and Pizzeria. Me? I love the elegant romantic vibe Seaglass with the amazing view 
and terrific menu with prices that make it the place you want to visit each and every week. Mike loves a drink in his hand and a cool ocean breeze right off the surf and the rhythms of a cooler reggae band. We all know Mike loves Bob Marley tunes at Surfside. Who doesn't love a great show? National acts, comedy, regional favorites, and the beautiful and intimate Blue Ocean Concert Hall. Lucky for us, Atlantic Hospitality is the host of all of these great places, and they treat everyone like they are Mike Lamazo. Best of all, we never have to choose. Park the car once, and all this fun is right at your fingertips. You can have it all in the heart of Salisbury Beach. Find out all the ways you can have a great night at Salisbury Beach at NorthShorePavilion.com. And Mike, Tom, and I will see you there. This is Tom Zappala. Located in the heart of downtown Haverhill, the Haverhill Beef Company is a full-service, old-fashioned butcher shop and meat market that continues to be a valued family tradition since 1952. Peter and Monica Carboni's Haverhill Beef offers individualized service from an outstanding selection of marinated sirloin tips, homemade sausage, marinated chicken, and thick, juicy chairman reserve steaks. Your family deserves the best, so call Peter at 978-374-4795 or visit their website at www.haverbeef.com. Hi, this is Mike, and I would like to tell you about the Deborah K. Law Offices, a firm that is focused on estate planning, probate, trust administration, and elder law issues. You will feel comfortable discussing important issues concerning both you and your loved ones, as well as having the information you need to make an informed decision about your family's future. How do I know? Because I'm a client of Dan Debert Care. If you want to have peace of mind knowing that your loved ones are protected, call Debert Care Law Offices today in Massachusetts, 978-686-4645 in New Hampshire, 603-894-4141. At Catadella Funeral Home, we reinvest in our business to provide your family with the best facilities. It begins with a beautifully landscaped exterior, parking for 250 vehicles, and a comfortable and inviting access to our renovated interior. Funerals can be costly, so you should review and compare plans to make sure you receive services that are fairly priced. I invite you to experience the Catadella difference in cost, facility, and service. Catadella is honoring and celebrating the lives of the people we loved, providing exceptional care since 1929. Today. 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 Today, Lawrence General Hospital has affiliations with leading Boston academic medical centers, top specialists from Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center and Floating Hospital for Children at Tufts Medical Center, work with our local doctors to bring world-class care close to home. Today, amazing partnerships are happening at Lawrence General Hospital. To learn more, visit lawrencegeneral.org slash today. Italian artisan cuisine combines simple fresh ingredients with time-honored preparation to create an incredible culinary experience. At Tuscan Kitchen, located in Salem's historic depot district, talented chefs prepare everything in-house from scratch for all to see. Guests enjoy their meal literally in our kitchen as food is prepared right in front of you. Wood ovens burn from morning till night, roasting vegetables, baking bread, and firing delightful thin crust pizzas. Prime steaks are seared on a wood grill. A rotisserie slowly roasts marinated whole chickens and lamb, while a pasta maker creates fresh fettuccine. More than just artisan cuisine, Tuscan Kitchen features the wine bar, live entertainment, weekly wine tastings, and elegant private dining and event space. Call 603-952-4875 or visit TuscanKitchen.com to make a reservation and learn more about the culinary adventure that awaits. In Italy, cooking is an art form. Tuscan Kitchen. Experience artisan Italian. Orthopedics Northeast and Essex Orthopedics have joined forces as Mobility Bone and Joint Institute to bring improved access and outstanding medical care. While our name has changed, our dedication to exceptional care remains the same as it has for the past 30 years. Same location, 16 Pelham Road, Salem, New Hampshire. This is Cindy and Mike Kunsla. Owners and operators of Four Oaks Country Club and Grazie Italian Restaurant in Drakeett, Massachusetts. Grazie Italian Restaurant is the hidden gem of the Merrimack Valley. Why is that? We have an incredible chef, Oscar Figueroa. In the words of local famous chef and restaurant owner Lydia Shire, Oscar thrives on hard work. He is capable and gifted. No one makes better food. Scallops, see it to perfection. Housemade ravioli with farm fresh local corn. And buttery tender lazy man's lobster, just to name a few. 
You have to come experience Grazia Italian Restaurant for yourself. Grazia Italian Restaurant, located at Four Oaks Country Club, 80 Meadow Creek Drive in Drake, Massachusetts. Hope, Hope to, to see, see you soon. soon. Yeah, that's not important. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> takes a while. It that's, takes a while. That's like, good, though. Sponsor the show. Yeah. I, uh, I just want to ask you, a uh, uh, kitchen, what five ingredients would you suggest to our listeners that every kitchen should not be without? Oh, wow. Um, flour, butter, yeast, maybe chicken broth and you know some spices salt chicken pepper. broth chicken broth is a big one in my house i use a lot of chicken broth i make i make a lot of broth every month okay i because right. i'm using it for my daughter who's five skylar her favorite dish is gumbo so hmm. i think we have another qualifier Louis, oh, well, who do we have Peter, go ahead Peter. hey hey what's going on with peter schipoletti peter hey. how are you Fine. I just pulled into the driveway with Gene. We were out running some errands. Uh, we actually listened to the show on the radio cool. for the first time rather than online, so that's right. great. Yeah. And I just want to say we enjoy the show uh, with Chef Gatto today. And, and Mike, we're loving the uh, new slash original format. So I just wanted to say hello and wish you continued success. Thank I, you so I much. really appreciate that. Do you have a question for Joe, or are you just calling in just to say hello this time around? <laughs> Yeah, really, just to say hello this time around. I, I appreciate that. Hey, listen, keep those tomatoes coming, pal. Oh, I will. Uh, just tell, hey, just tell real know. quickly, tell Joe how many different varieties of tomatoes you have in your backyard. Well, my specialty is heirloom tomatoes. Over the years, I've grown 400 different varieties of mostly heirloom. <laughs> right now, I have uh, 70 tomato plants spanning 54 varieties. I've cut back. Wow. But, uh, Still wow. Going. Will you oh, adopt me? <laughs> <laughs> Did you hear what he said? Will no, you adopt will you adopt them? <laughs> well, I'm glad to give him some tomatoes. Yeah, that's a, that's amazing. I love heirloom tomatoes. Too. Oh, they're unbelievable. You, I make a meal out of them. Yeah. That's but you know, when I use the mozzarella, I yep. usually run down a market basket to get it though. I don't make my own. It's okay. I'm not judging you. Judging you. You don't judging have any, <laughs> judging you. You don't judging have any you. water buffaloes in your backyard. <laughs> Who does? I mean, what you? No. I don't. I don't. I don't think there's a cow in Wyndham, is there? There's, I don't know. I'd go milk and. I would think there's a couple of cows out there that you could milk. You think so? Yeah. All right. Hey, Peter. Thank you very much for giving us a call. He's, he's, oh, thank he's you, gone. Peter. What was that place? Uh, what was that place that used to be sponsors on the show in Amesbury that were making the mozzarella? Where like. We got the mozzarella where the milk was in the cow. He went like, back to Italy. The, the previous day. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it well, was out That stuff's the best. Oh, it was what, awesome. what an operation he had. Uh, was it Wolf or something like that? Yeah. 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 It was up uh, close to Malise Restaurant in Naysbury at the, at the Rotary there. That's so good. He was, up, he was up in the hill. Yeah. Uh, but he went back uh, to Italy to, to help his family. Nice. Oh, wow. And uh, yeah, I missed that. Boy. That he kept the supplies so with good. different types of cheese. Yeah. Oh. Fresh mozzarella to me is just, that's top five for yeah. me. I just did a big demo for that on Friday. And pulling fresh mozz when you slice it up and it's warm and you serve it to people, you when can see, warm? oh yeah, people like lose their mind. Mm. It's when it, when you just finish pulling it and it's still a little malleable, it's, it's still a little what? Uh, squishy. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Mike. You had malleable. I know. I know. I like it. It's a fun game we're playing. I mean, I, if I can't break them with them, uh, what's the sense of having them here? <laughs> this, this is our stick together. That's right. Yeah. That's why you put me in this seat. You know. That's why he's, he asked me to come on the show with him. Well, let's help. We're going to make it on TV. I hope Tommy doesn't hear about this. <laughs> I was, I, I was a judge on a talent show for Deborah Cosby, and. I was on there for about two years, and he was so annoyed. Why didn't she ask me to come on? And it would be televised. She had her own show, like uh, it a show on Sunday at 1130. Right. Like, Community auditions, wasn't it? Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. And, and we'd have different kids coming in, and they would would have maybe six or seven that we'd judge. And it was on TV and everything else. Well, Tommy was so annoyed 
that she asked me and not him. So one day <laughs> I can't make it. So I says, why don't you take my place? Really? So he shows up and it's at the Hard Rock Cafe. That's where they're filming it. Oh, wow. Something went wrong with the camera. Oh, no. That, that was on the judges. So when they went to show the judges and they're given their uh, points for the act that just showed, it was nothing there. All it showed was Tom Zappler, his name, and, oh, his, no. and him talking. So he blamed me. He <laughs> says, you set that up. You did it on purpose. Oh, freaking hysterical. I mean, if you could only, I mean, that's great. Absolutely hysterical. Hey, listen, I know we we could keep going and going and going. And, uh, and I hope you do come back. Uh, for, Anytime. You know, maybe another 10 years or so. Hey, that sounds about right. <laughs> How could people watch your show? Uh, you can access everything off my Instagram at Chef Joe Gatto. Um, that is really how every single link to my show, my podcast, my radio show. Do we have Instagram? Book. We don't. How come? Mikey. <laughs> <laughs> you can't get back on Facebook. <laughs> that, that, that's because they kicked me off. Yeah. It's really starting to tick me off. Maybe. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. You want an so, IG? We can do so, an IG. Yeah. It's not exactly our demographic, but yeah. No, I know it's. So not, I, I, I could, know it's not. I could, you know, I, I could help you. I could, like, you know, put you in stories and stuff like that, so people will find you. I could help. And how much is that going to cost, Louie and I? I mean, it really depends. We'll have to talk about that off air, <laughs> <laughs> or I'll have to cut a deal with the second mic. How much for ten thousand followers? How much can we, can we buy up? Oh, you can get those for like a buck fifty oh, nowadays. No. <laughs> How many people legit. follow you? Yeah, uh, it's a little over forty thousand. Yep. What does he have that we don't? I mean, you can a show on network television. <laughs> <laughs> look at these look talent. At these. <laughs> talent. <laughs> That's true, yeah. and and some nice words. Yeah, some beautiful right. some words. Fancy some fancy words, words. and fancy I make words. I make really good cinnamon rolls. So the cinnamon roll, me, that was outrageous. Right, but you can't eat one of those suckers. No, no, it's tough. I see. I make them, and my kids just eat them all. It's nice. Because they won't be, they won't be there when I get back. What do you, what have your kids mastered? What's they name? really love making pasta. My middle daughter Cassidy, um, like we did Taco Tuesday, we did um, the, like pulled beef tacos, and she made the tortillas. Oh, so she'll make the dough, and you know she'll roll them out, and she'll get on the stove and mm -hmm. and bang those out. My son can do quite a bit. He helped me make the cinnamon rolls, and he can do pasta by himself. And my littlest daughter, who's five. She does everything. She actually did tie-dye bagels, which are on my Instagram with me, which nice. were super fun. We like making bagels. And the most recent thing we did um, with my middle daughter, Cassidy, we made chocolate from scratch. So we got the cacao pods and we cracked them open and like fermented it for seven days and then ground it and made the chocolate. Can you come over to my house and build a still? <laughs> Help me build a still. <laughs> it's, 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 I've got a shed. I know. It's, <laughs> like when I say, sometimes when I say it out loud, I'm like, what am I doing? Yeah. <laughs> well, like I said, you created a niche and from scratch has really taken off. And I, I'm, I'm glad that you took the time to join us here on the Sicilian Corner. With Louis and I both appreciate it. Honestly, anytime oh, you know, yeah. you know, I love coming in here. I love spending time with you guys, and we just have a lot of fun, and we we talk about some really interesting stuff. Well, well we just touched, <laughs> right? Not even. Well, talk I about mean, the radio show, though, so people can find the radio show. Yeah, you can uh, hear me on WBUR, which is that's radio, our demographic right there. Radio Boston. Um, I have a show that I go on. We, I do one one a month, and I make everything from scratch on air. So we stream do it you? live. Yeah. So I've done, let's see, I've made pasta on air. So you're doing a video stream? Yeah, we're doing a live video oh. stream as we do the radio show itself. Um, so you can watch us. And I'm with Tiziana Deering, who I'm sure a lot of your audience knows. Tiziana is a great friend of mine. And I make, let's see, I've made everything from pasta. I pulled fresh moths. I made dumplings. I made sushi. Um, the next one I'm doing, I'm making grilled cheese from scratch. Hmm. So I'm going to make the butter. I'm going to make the bread. We're going to do a tomato soup, and my son's going to come with me and be a taste tester on the air. Nice. You love what you're doing, don't you? Yeah, I do. I really do. I get to do what I love to do. I get to do it with my family, and I really just have a passion for it, and I love showing people and just teaching them and, and just kind of 
opening up this world that they might not know exists. And and I love people and food. So I want to thank you. Thank you. And I mean it from the bottom of my heart. You're uh, you're a very special guest for for us. Thanks, and uh, thank you very much for coming on board. Have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. Uh, happy Father's Day. Uh, enjoy. And thank you very much. Tune in next week for the Sicilian Connor. Woohoo! Yahoo! <laughs>